Okay, let's walk through using group policy to set password policies. Yeah, you may have done this in another video or in another class, but I want to walk through and just make sure we get everybody on the same page. So I'm going to go to Tools and Group Policy Management. In Group Policy Management, I have a couple of things here. So the default domain policy impacts all devices in the domain, including my domain controllers and all workstations, which is where my user accounts are going to be held and so where password policies need to be applied. So if I set this to my default domain policy, then it's going to impact everything no matter where it's at. If I set it for the default domain controllers policy, then it's going to impact my domain controllers and consequently all of my domain accounts, but not local machine accounts. All right, just a couple of things for you to be aware of. Now, I want to do this to the default domain policy, and I could come down here and edit it here, or I can edit it right through this link. It doesn't really matter to me. So I'm going to right-click and edit, and I'm going to find, now interestingly enough, my password policies are not going to be found under user settings. They're going to be found under computer settings. And it's a little bit ironic, but the reason it's there is because the computer is what actually holds the user accounts. So user accounts don't exist outside of a location in a domain controller or in a local security accounts management database. So that's why it's in the computer settings. So I'm going to go to computer configuration, policies, Windows settings, and I want security settings. Okay. In just a minute, we're going to talk about password policies. But since we're here, let me point out a couple of other things. In security settings, right here, account policies, that's where we're going to have all of our password settings and anything else related to accounts. But we also have local policies. Double click on that real quick. I've got an audit policy, user rights assignment, and security options. I'll click on user rights assignment. And this is a bunch of settings related to what a user is allowed to do on a local device. So... If there are certain things I want set, allow log on locally, yes or no. Allow log on through remote desktop session, yes or no. And remember, these are user rights assignments to the particular computer. Okay, so I have user rights assignments. I also have some security options here. And notice they're grouped, accounts, audit, decom, devices, domain controller, domain member, interactive log on. So, all of these different settings will control whatever that little component is. So do not require control alt delete to log in. Turn that on, and now they no longer need to use control alt delete when they go to log into a system. I just clicked away from that half heartedly. I don't know where it went. Maybe I did actually close it correctly. Okay, so, and then in our security settings. So we have local policies, event log, and then a bunch of other settings here. Uh, software restriction policies, the updated account control policies, advanced audit configuration. That's one other thing I wanna show you real quick. If you go to local policies, you can set an audit policy. So there are certain things that are gonna be audited automatically. User log on, log off is one of them. But there are other things that are not audited automatically. So, for example, um, object access. You want to see if somebody tries and fails to access a particular file or folder. Or you want to see if they try and succeed. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you have to do to turn this on. One of them is here. You have to go to the audit policy, and here's where you can specify what you want to audit. So, you can audit object access right here, and you can turn that on and say, yes, I want to audit whenever somebody accesses a file or folder or any other object. I want to audit privilege use, whatever. Now, if you're doing, if you're trying to audit file or folder access, then what you do, this is one half of it. You have to turn it on. And the other thing you'll do is you will go to the particular in file explorer, you'll go to the particular file or folder and enabling auditing there. Now, all auditing events go to your security log. I'm not a big fan of auditing object access, by the way. A single uh, transaction can add quite a few events. 
So what happens is if you start auditing, you start getting swamped in data, especially if you're auditing a lot of things. So if you ever have to audit object access, audit only what you have to, only for as long as you have to, and then turn it off. And it only works if you are reviewing it on a regular basis. Okay, so let's jump back to what we started to say here, and that is account policies. So I have a password policy, a lockout policy, and a Kerberos policy. Now the Kerberos policy, typically we can leave that alone. Very, very rarely do we need to make changes to it, but it does give us some other things. Enforce user logon restrictions, yes. Uh, maximum lifetime for a service ticket is 10 hours or 600 minutes. Maximum uh, lifetime for a user ticket is 10 hours. Maximum lifetime for user ticket renewal, seven days. You can't renew beyond that. You have to get a new one. Uh, maximum tolerance for computer clock synchronization is five minutes. Basically what that means is if there is a five minute difference between your device on your computer clock, there's a five minute difference between the device you're using and between the device that granted you the ticket, you will have a problem. It won't work correctly. So you need to make sure time is relatively synchronized on a domain that should be not a, or should not be a problem because all domain members should pull their time from the domain controller. One other thing just to be aware of, and that is that that five minutes is adjusted for a uh, time zone. So you don't have to worry about, well, you know, I'm in the Pacific time zone and I'm trying to access a resource in mountain time zone, so I'm going to be off by more than an hour. No, it'll automatically adjust for that. All right, back to password policy. Here we go. Enforce password history, 24 passwords remembered, which basically means users can't reuse a password 24 times until they've gone through 24 other passwords. Uh, maximum password age, we're going to change it every 42 days. Minimum password age, they have to maintain it for at least one day. The idea there is somebody can't, say, have their favorite password, and then password change time comes up, and they just change it 23 times in a hurry so that they can set it back to what they really wanted all along. That's what your minimum password age does. It keeps them from doing that. Uh, minimum password length, seven characters. All of these, by the way, are editable. You click on them and you change it here. Um, minimum password length audit, uh, length audit. So I can specify, I want to set 10 as my minimum password length audit. It won't enforce it, but it will tell me all the ones that don't match that. Uh, password must meet complexity requirements, yes or no. By the way, all of these are default settings. Um, the complexity requirements mean they cannot use two consecutive letters from their username and they cannot or the password must include the four character types uppercase lowercase numeric and special characters it has to use three of them uh relax minimum password length limits okay what this is about is your minimum password length is let me go to my explain over here zero to 14 characters right here if the relaxed minimum password length limit is defined and enabled then we can go from zero to 128 characters probably not required but in some instances you might want to do that and then store passwords using reversible encryption is disabled by default unless you have no other choice leave that disabled okay so when you are setting your password policy and hopefully your password policy has been established with management you've sat down you've talked about it you've decided this is what our password policy is going to be we just configure this to match it and then active directory will enforce that policy for us now in that i also want to point out the account lockout so i will start with this when the account lockout threshold the account lockout threshold is how many times a user can put in a bad password before it locks their account. Now set to zero, that means more not going to track it. They can do whatever they want. But if I set that to, let's say, three, then 
ignore this for the moment. Then, uh, after three logout attempts, their account will be locked. Now, because of that, we can leave these two as undefined. So this pops up and says, hey, if we're going to do this, then we need to define how long they're locked out for and when to reset their lockout counter. So you can't really edit them from here, so we're just going to click OK. And then we're going to change it here. So the account lockout duration. How long is their account, or, or basically when does it automatically unlock? And your values are 0 to almost 100,000, like 99,999. That's in minutes. So what this means is if somebody locks their account, 30 minutes later it will automatically unlock. And then I can set that to whatever time that I want. If I don't want it to automatically unlock, then what I do is I set this to 0. And now you'll notice what it just set up here. The account is locked out until the administrator unlocks it. So it will be locked forever until the administrator user, administrative user manually unlocks their account. That actually can be useful sometimes if someone's trying to brute force hack a password. Maybe you want that to uh, not automatically unlock so that you get to see that, hey, this account was locked, somebody tried to attack it. I've actually had that happen before, and that has come in useful. If I would have had their accounts automatically unlock after 30 minutes, I would have never known that somebody was trying to brute force uh, somebody else's password. All right, so I'm going to apply that, and then let's look at the last one here, reset account lockout counter after 30 minutes. Basically, what it means is we will allow no more than three logins within 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, we reset that counter. So if they enter their password correctly, incorrectly twice and then log in, 30 minutes later, the system will forget that they did the two incorrect logins. So the next morning, they can do it again. You can adjust that, obviously, in minutes. Um, the idea here being you probably don't want them to say, hey, you can only put in your password incorrectly, you know, three times in 10 years. Otherwise, it's going to lock your account. Um, I type up my password more often than that. So, so that is our account lockout policy. The account lockout policy, the password policy normally go hand in hand. Um, these are one of the few policies that I would actually set in the default domain policy. Typically, I don't like to mess with the default domain policy. I like to leave it alone. These two things are things that I will set there in the default domain policy to impact everything. But the only reason I do that is because we already have password settings in the default domain policy. You saw all the default settings there. So I will change those rather than creating another policy and then trying to set precedents to determine which one overrides the other. It's easier just to change this one. But other than that, I will typically leave the domain policy alone, create other policies, and then link them to the domain. I can have multiple policies linked to a domain. I can have the same policy linked in multiple places. It's incredibly flexible. So I will typically do that and leave the default domain policy alone other than the password settings. Okay, there we go. Setting password policies using Active Directory Group Policy.